Happy to be here with Peter Varnai. Uh, so Peter is a member of my group coaching program, and he is super helpful to so many people, myself included, <laughs> with uh, with his tech skills, but not just tech skills, but just his um, wonderful personality to work with. And also his, um, you know, understanding of authentic marketing and 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 everything else, joy for productivity, et cetera. So, Peter, I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for doing this. Well, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So, why don't you start with an introduction of your work at the stage, and and then have you share some insights from what you were learning. All right. Um... So I'm Peter Varnay, uh, and I help service providing solopreneurs uh, with their business-related tech challenges. And that covers a wide range, but it's typically uh, websites, um, a lot of things with uh, different accounts on different services, um, like login problems and uh, setting problems and connecting those different services with each other, like automations. Mm, yeah, actually, I, I I do have a lot of things. And when I when I hear the word like to niche down, <laughs> I go like, uh. <laughs> well, I, I think of you as 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 a, as a digital handyman. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, that's. Yeah, that's that's correct. Some of my clients call me something that I'm not comfortable with, but they are trying to force me to force me lovingly to use that that I'm a tech wizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I because you are um, kind of a go-to person for like, okay, I'm having this tech challenge in my business, etc. And you also <clears throat> help people with their joyful productivity stuff as well, um, including sort of information, knowledge management, information management, that kind of stuff too, right? Oh, yeah. Um, it's it's a huge thing for me because I'm a father of two. Um, young kids. <laughs> oh, of young kids uh, with little, very little age difference between them. Wow. And I'm, I also count myself a multi-potentialite. So I have my main business, which is this, but next to that, I have four other projects that I'm running. <laughs> yeah, great. So I really have to be proactive and I found, so I'm, I'm really learning a lot in that intentionally. Mm -hmm. And I'm lo I love sharing that forward and paying that forward. Yeah. And uh, it started combining from actual like digital decluttering, which is a technical stuff. And then it started combining with my um, productivity knowledge, and so yes. this is this is kind of a new area for me in my business, right? Which yeah. I'm excited about. Yeah. It is. Well, let's get into some insights for for the audience that um, I think they'll benefit from quite a bit. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. Like we can talk about your progress and insights, but it's like since you help so many solopreneurs, it's like there's also progress and insights from your observation of, of their journey as well. But um, I'll let you start and share, and then I'll maybe ask you some questions. So anything you want to yeah, start with? That, that second question was actually really interesting. And let's get back to that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> I would love you to clarify it a bit even more because you 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 really touched on something there. So many things suddenly came to my mind, and let's create some temporary constraints together. Yes, you always say <laughs> on yes, that question. Yes. yes. Uh, but on on my side and on my business side, um, the progress is. Um, I'm really happy about two things. One, and they are combined, or or, yeah, they go hand in hand. That. I have a really full business now. Yeah. Um, I started this only a few years ago. Um, and I have a full practice. And of course, there is always fluctuation. Some people sure. come and go, projects yeah. come and go. Yeah. But I have a full business. Um, and so that's also why I had to amp up my productivity 
And so the other progress is that I was able to, <laughs> and I'm so, so, so happy about it. Um, I was going crazy <laughs> with under the workload, but um, the things I learned from you really, really helped me with that. Um, yeah, so I would say that's the progress report on my own business. Yeah, any um, particular concept or process? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. The one thing that helped me the most, right, the biggest chaos was about in my head, was what are my projects? How am I categorizing? What are my priorities? And and your two concepts, one is the uh, eight practices. Do you call them practices of joy yeah. for productivity? Yeah. Um, um, or principles? Yeah. Uh, well, it's the eight practices of authentic business. And then, and then joy for productivity has like oh, 20, yeah. 20 different things. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm always I'm always mixing those up. But the, yeah. the, the, the eight practices of uh, authentic business is, yeah. is what I mean. Yeah. Uh, it just quickly and easily clarified and keeps clarifying what I want to spend time on in my business. Yes. Yes, and yes. Uh, in connection with that, the 111 formula that you yes. shared. Yes. Those two in combination. Now, everything I do in my business are now tied to 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 either a, a project yes. in, in yes. 111 or a category in the eight practices. Yes. Now everything is just so clear. It's so easy <laughs> to prioritize. I. It's yeah. so easy to file things to yeah. categorize to do's. So that was huge. That was that's that helped really a lot. good. Well, I will be sure to link below um, the one eleven formula and the eight practices. I have <clears throat> I have a a YouTube video about each one, so I'll link it below. For some reason, if you don't see it below, please remind me <laughs> to link it. <laughs> um, those who are watching. Um, okay, that's really good. And so give us a sense that, you know, you've got these two young kids, you've got, um, you know, your family life, basically, and then you have <laughs> these four or five different projects. So then how do you, <clears throat> for those who are also so busy, I mean, all of us are busy in different ways. How, how, what, like, if you were to share just a couple of things that are essential for you. So you, you shared the eight practices, one eleven formula. But any any other details you want to say about that, or how do you manage the chaos? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but the f the first thing, I think, if I share how it evolved for me, those are yeah. like the actual steps that helped me the most. Yeah. Uh, first, um, I was always trying to categorize by deliverables, as you suggest. Uh -huh. And I was still creating chaos somehow. I was not completely following your, your directions, I, I believe. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I learned this, the eight practices and, and started organizing all my workflow knowledge, which you call hat manuals, yeah. under those. Right. Yep. And, uh, and suddenly... It was just so intuitive to know where to reach for when I need to know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And it's yes. so easy to store my knowledge in these categories. It's since I started categorizing them in those, it's like, oh, sure, it goes into that category, of course. And next yeah. time I will do it that way. Yes. It was a huge shift. It started saving me a lot of time. So yeah. that was the first and then then i started categorizing my to do list right into those categories right and up till that point actually i think i was a bit mixing up like the the knowledge and workflow and to do lists in in almost like the same documents yeah um so that i realized that's not healthy so i started separating them but now what connects them are these eight categories. Mm -hmm. They are completely separated, but they are in these eight categories. Yeah. Um, and the same thing happened with the to-dos. Um, I, it's just so um, intuitive to, to 
to know which category to reach out for, which category to put the to do in. Yeah. So, so that's how the eight practices really clarified a lot of things. Yeah. I, I think the, the, the takeaway for those who are watching this is if you don't have a framework of how your work, sort of a holistic framework about your work, it's you have to do that first before you can create these categories that make sense. Um, and yeah, I've been working on those eight categories for a long time. And it's like, okay, these eight, the, these eight are at least they haven't changed for several years now. And it's like, I just, just to, for those who are like, okay, George, can you just say what the eight are? I'll just say what the eight are real, real, real quick. I, I won't put you on the spot, um, <laughs> but I'll, uh, joyful productivity, healthy money, content creation, content distribution. Um, and then, and then this, this, this part, the, the next four always get a little murky because of, because of the, because of the ordering of them. I'm still, I'm still like coming up with a new order that com I'm confirming a new order of it, but um, there is um, uh, net caring and collabs aligned offers um, gentle launches or authentic outreach and mastery of your craft. So it's like those eight to me form the holistic view of at least a small business, solopreneur business. And so having those areas means, okay, these are the eight areas to work on. And if something, if I'm working on something and I can't fit it into one of these eight, I have to ask why, <laughs> is there a ninth category or maybe I should get rid of it or um, let's put it into those categories. And then once you are working on one category, you're working on net caring or something, you can open it and, and then more easily prioritize. Okay. For net caring, for collaborations, what, what's the highest priority here? Right. So how do you, yeah. So tell us a bit about like on a day-to-day -day basis then now with all the stuff you're doing, how do you prioritize even with these eight categories? Um. <clears throat> Wait, um, sorry, just a, a sentence for the previous topic that yeah. e exactly this is why they are so useful because on one hand, I know if something doesn't fit in any, any, it's probably not important and useful. Yeah. And the other thing you mentioned that I can prioritize within each category is, yeah. oh my God, such a relief. Um, and through that, what I learned is like, I would say 90% of my ideas, like this should be done. This should be learned. I should watch that. Is is just not possible to 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 do. Like yeah. it's it's so much. Yeah. <laughs> and there yes. is a the 10 percent that's actually the useful and doable. And it's yes. it's just it's almost like as if it's automatically surfacing this way. And the rest just gets pulled lower lower like it's not priority one it's not scheduled for any date and it's it's been created a long time ago and bam they're gone <laughs> i don't even see them yes 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 um i'm not sure if i answered your yeah your question yeah. but that, I, those I, feelings I think so. came up in me right 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 um okay that's really helpful and any other kind of insights you have had about joyful productivity that you want to to share with people um because uh well we could say joyful productivity or we could say generally um moving your business forward in a kind of a consistent manner i guess yeah um on the joyful productivity part um i learned two huge lessons one is the one that i mentioned before uh ju just now the the that ninety percent of the stuff that comes up is not doable, and I don't even have to do it. Yes. The the other stuff was, uh, and oh my god, I'm so so bad on memory. I just had it on the top of my mind. No, that's okay. <laughs> It'll come back to you. It'll come um, back to you. <laughs> um. Can Can you rephrase the end of your question? Yeah. Well. Um. So. Yeah. Any Any other joyful productivity insights? But also. 
what do you do to keep moving your business forward on a consistent basis? Um, because you, because now the reason I specifically asked that is because you have, you're in a fortunate place to have a full practice. And so it's like the common situation of someone with a full practice is um, they just get really busy with clients and then that's all they do all the time. Mm -hmm. So chaos starts to get created in other areas or just sort of like the longer term things don't, don't get touched at all because they're just client work all the time. Um, so yeah, I'm curious about that. How do you, Mm -hmm. Thanks. Work now the the previous thing came back, and yeah. there is another insight. So yeah, just st still half a sentence, which is going to be, of course, free uh, on joyful productivity. What I realized is, um, it's not enough to design a system. It's at least with my speed that I'm speeding ahead in life, I need to redesign those systems or review those systems almost weekly, mm -hmm. because my family life is hectic my business yes. changes so much my clients have different uh priorities i have different priorities new projects come in old projects go on yeah and just designing one system for like a weekly schedule or something like that is not was not working and i was so frustrated yeah. like i created the perfect system and it's not working for me of course <laughs> not. i i have to I reiterate it continuously, yeah. ongoingly. Yeah. Well, it's forever. because you are evolving. <laughs> you're evolving quite quickly at this time. It's like maybe in a couple of years when things are more, I don't know, if if and when things become more stable, <laughs> in diff, in di, you know, then, yeah. then it's like, then the stable system can work, but you are evolving. And so, so when you say, when you say adjust your systems, let's get more specific. Um, what do you mean by that? Um... I mean, the hat manuals for yes. sure, yes. like how I do things and 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 ongoingly like making them easier mm -hmm. as my workload rises. Um, and also, one heavy point in this was weekly schedule for me. Yes, my weekly schedule is like I I. One week I decided I'm going to spend, I don't know, con on content creation half an hour each day and it works. And two weeks later, I need a different kind of setup. Maybe yes. I need to batch create them yes. in one day. And then so. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. And it, and it's and you're still finding maybe what works best for you, like for content creation, yes. for example, like that's mm -hmm. also part of it. Oh, yeah. It's like you have to experiment with different ways. Right. Yeah. yeah. A lot uh, of experimentation. A lot of experimentation. As yeah. you always say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It's like we don't we don't we can't really experience our potential until we try these different ways. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, that's really that's really good. And okay, well, I want to also address the people who are watching who says, "Oh, I wish I had a full practice." <laughs> yeah. Um, what? I mean, talk about your progress in that area. Like, what? What helped to get you there? Um, I think you 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 might have recently made a video about how, or maybe you made a post about how it's like you don't need millions of people following you to have a full practice yeah <laughs> um uh i i i think i i i've posted about that on the forum yeah yeah, yeah. Ah, right okay uh yeah and yeah um i went um i i think most people only notice your um like um social media and content creation path of business building but you always say there is the net caring path as well yes yes and um i love creating content but somehow when the kids were born it, it slowed down yeah and uh, unknowingly to myself i started the net caring path <laughs> i wasn't even even aware of that first uh until the point that i started that i started following people yeah ongoingly 
getting in touch with them, like just like commenting on their stuff that I genuinely enjoyed. So it was not like a forced thing, not like networking. <laughs> yes. Um, but I just found some inspiring people and I wanted to get in touch with them, had virtual coffees like on Zoom. Um, and somehow many of these people ended up asking me that oh wait you you're you're helping with tech right like i have these issues or my friend have these issues could you help and so so net caring was was the key for in my case yeah absolutely and it's really uh, worked <laughs> yeah so you you thank you for those sharing those uh details that's really helpful and when you um when you say you did the virtual coffees like how did you reach out what was the what was the framing of the invitation? Anything you want to say there? You know, the funny thing is, uh, since it was not a forced process, it yeah. came out just so naturally after a while with each person yeah. that I yeah. don't even didn't even notice. Uh -huh. Most, if, if I try to think back to the last few, it was like, um, oh yeah, I I agreed with you on that post, and and then we just shared a couple of thoughts, and after a few back and forth um chat lines we were like we should totally have virtual coffee and discuss this live yes 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 <laughs> that's great that's actually but but that's a really nice organic way mm -hmm. of creating a a live connection with someone a real-time connection it's like yeah just like what you said like you, you you've gone back and forth a little bit in comments and then it's like well mm -hmm. like why don't we talk about this on zoom or you know talk talk that's great. That's really that's really helpful. Um, actually, so well, we are already winding winding down this conversation, and so I want to ask you, uh, since this is a series, we're going to be checking in with you mm -hmm. a couple of times during this year. Um, what would you like to commit to or dedicate? What What is your aim for for progress? So that next time we we talk with you, you'll, you'll be able to celebrate something with us um there is two things that are probably there are two things probably related to each other and funnily enough you already mentioned that that how when a business is growing you get easily overwhelmed and that maybe at one point you you just kind of do more hours in a day <laughs> So the two things I, I started working on in my own life and business is one is, I don't like that word, but like upscaling my business <laughs> to, to have yeah. not just one-on-one -on -one work, but courses probably. Yeah. And and um, so gentle lunches and course creation is yeah. one of the huge thing that I want to do monthly. Yeah. yeah. And um, the other thing is, this is kind of funny for me is it comes from probably my perfectionism or I don't know, maybe empathy and caring. I don't know. Uh, is that I spend too much time on communication, like responding emails, responding to chat messages. And you already helped me a lot with that. When you said, treat them as like even long emails, treat them as uh, instant messaging, uh, yeah. like just, just messages. Yeah. Like text messages and yeah. replying in that manner that already helped a lot but i want to take communication written communication more lightly mm, yes yes that's going to be a key to to avoiding overwhelm yes me. very good okay so more passive income and more light communication are the two things i'm committing to yes building. good good well looking forward to checking <laughs> checking in on, on those things and that's exciting i will of course put uh yeah where, where can people where should people follow you um i'll put those links below but what what do you what would you like what would you like them to go um somehow i started loving these days youtube and linkedin oh okay great so those are the places where i'm most actively active as uh -huh. i still yeah. post to to facebook as well but mm -hmm. Yeah. If someone new wants to like follow me, then I would suggest LinkedIn or YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds great. Anything else, Peter, you want to share before we 
complete. Mm, I think we covered everything. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, if anybody has questions for Peter or comments, of course, put it below and uh, I'll be sure Peter sees it. So thank you so much, Peter, for your work and Thank you your so much, Jordan. caring for your clients. Grateful for, for your presence and uh, in, the, in the community as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you for creating that community in the first Yeah, place yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. your knowledge. Thank you so much, George. Yeah, thanks, Peter.